<laughs> you just broke your fucking promise, you Tyler. Lied like two you seconds. Literally on stream. <laughs> I didn't live hear. On I didn't stream. hear any kazoo. There was no kazoo playing. I was just humming. Welcome back to another episode of Casual Master Quest. This is episode 66. I'm your mm. host for the episode, Nick, and I'm joined by my lovely co host, oh, Tyler yeah. and Glenn. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Hey. Mm. Oh, how? I can't wait to fix the audio level on this. I'm so excited. Hell yeah. You you, mm. you do all that that beautiful, <laughs> magical editing work. And, and oh, no. I got it. Yeah. Better bring it Okay, so what's, 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 what's going on here? This is. Episode 66? Episode mm -hmm. 66. Three episodes uh, away from the sex number. Episode 66? Yeah, what? Is, is there any reference here? No one no one can say? No. Execute Order 66. Oh, yeah. Star Wars killing the Jedis. Yes. That is the order that kills all the Jedis. Uh, right. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. That, that, it seemed familiar, but, you know, it just didn't come to me off the top of my head. Don't worry. Uh, I don't have anything for that. <laughs> I'm fucking out of it. Like, I, I am, I'm feisty. Like, I got some fight in me, but it's like, I got a plus five in charisma right now, but like a negative two in intelligence. Like, <laughs> I am ready to rattle something off, but it's not going to be witty. You're David okay. after dentists. Yeah. Well, then, why don't you just start with telling us how your week's been, so that way we can uh, ease into it. Well, shit, senpai, that's all you needed to say. Uh, so, I've been on, uh, it's not really an actual work vacation, but it feels like it. These past few weeks, what if, uh, the truck uh, routes I've been covering has been almost a nightmare. It feels like I haven't really gotten time to play video games or whatnot. But this fucking week, hell yes, it's been great like honestly i've been doing a fun time haven't hit any deer this time so no drug test or anything like that like it's been a <laughs> solid improvement and uh i've been using a lot of my free time to uh obviously play video games but also prepare for a birthday party for my wife yay happy birthday Amanda. Yay. <laughs> you guys unconsciously both clapped at the same time i'm so <laughs> proud of you that's what i'm going to use to sync the podcast so <laughs> 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 so uh her birthday isn't uh, until tomorrow for us yesterday for the podcast listeners uh this uh sunday and i got her a few gifts and it's so weird because it's like shopping for myself but i don't get the stuff it's <laughs> really weird it's so upsetting she actually asked for my help yesterday with one of them <laughs> Oh gosh, which one? The the monitor. She's like, how do I connect this? And I was like, well, what are the inputs? No, so I helped her kind of navigate. <laughs> it's like it's me asking my grandmother how to set up the printer. It's like, well, whoa, I, I don't whoa. know. No, I was very helpful, and I yeah, helped I it bet. happen. Did you did you ask her if she has Windows ninety eight installed? Windows XP, thank you. All right. Oh, I, I'm sorry. You oh, that's loads better. You I, are simply I miss Windows XP. XP yeah. is so good. Oh, man, yeah. I miss XP. <laughs> We're all just like, I miss XP. <laughs> it was so good. Like, you don't honestly, have to miss it for long because we're going to be playing D&D soon. XP. Yeah. <laughs> Puns. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> so, uh, it's funny you brought uh, up D&D, Glenn. Fetch me Do you want to tell us a little bit about our D&D session or upcoming thing? Well, we're going to play a game called Dungeons & Dragons together. Really? Dungeons yep. & Dragons? And it's going to be fun. <laughs> are we prepared for something like that? Dude, do you think we're actually capable of making an entertaining D&D &D session? Yes. I think we are. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have I no like charisma, and we have a relatively successful D&D podcast already. You guys would be great. Have either of you heard of the game Katamari Damacy? I or Katamari in general? Yeah. No. Uh, it's, a, it's a game where the ultimate goal is to win by taking a a ball that like anytime you touch an object with it and you're just running around with this ball it uh, it collects stuff so it's like mm. you're just running around uh trying to you know cause chaos by running into objects and picking up and just you keep going no matter you know whatever fucking hits you just keep moving it's crazy and that's what i think our dnd uh campaign is going to be we're just going to be bowling over with wild music playing in the background we're going to collect shit that, and then eventually yeah. we just die that cat that quest of casual I mean, masters questing is going to be pretty great yeah <laughs> oh my the god name, T -T -B -D, tbd you know <laughs> 
Uh, could we? Oh, whoops. Uh, what is the name of the podcast? Quest um, of Magical. Magical. A uh, Magical. Oh boy, I just mixed up Master and Casual. <laughs> no, I don't yeah. know. We came up with a bunch of fun ideas, but I, I do like thing. the one that we had you use the old man voice on. I think uh, I wanted to commit to that because honestly, oh, like, is that in such, here? We I can't out? change it because otherwise that'll mess with the stream. But it was. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was done in the other dungeon hall. Chat. Yeah, it was. Um, oh yeah, the casual quest masters. Yeah, the casual quest masters. Casual quest masters going on master casual quests. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so fucking stupid. I love yeah. it. It's gonna I be love great. It so yeah, fucking much. I think it fits right into us. And just to preface, <laughs> like my character that I'll be playing, is you take a combination of Drax, the Destroyer from the Marvel Universe, Kratos from the new. I was going to say, uh, you, you went quiet for a second. You oh, did I go really? Okay, I heard so Drax, you take, and then I heard yeah. Kratos, but... <laughs> yeah, so you take Drax from uh, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or even the comics, and then you take Kratos, and you mix them, and then there's just kind of oddball character, so I'm excited. Yeah. From what I've read, all your characters are pretty interesting. I'm surprised. I'm interested to see how they interact together. What about you, Tyler? Uh, I mean, when you think about my character, it's like a combination between uh, Emperor Kuzco from The Emperor's New Groove mixed with Roger from American Dad, where like I'm, I'm this marmy little brat that gets manhandled by a, a wiser, older adult. But Roger loves to, like, disguise himself to get himself into different situations to fit the role. And honestly, like, I'm totally playing the actor slash infiltrator type that will probably get into wild hijinks to help us, you know, get an advantage. I feel like our characters are going to want to get into places that the DM, not the DM themselves, but the uh, the characters that the DM create will not want us to get into. And I will be... You know, I will be the lube to the the dry situation we'll try to enter. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And and we'll get, let you more uh, know more about that um, as things come closer to being finalized. We don't want to give too much away uh, because Brandon is also going to be a part of it, and I don't really know too much about Brandon's character, and I want to be surprised. Yep. And okay, but we can so say it's going to be to this Thursday, though, right? Sorry? This coming Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. It'll be, we'll be uh, uh, at least it. that's the recording. Uh, uh, we don't know if we're doing it live or not, unless people like not yet. really yeah. want yes. that shit. But honestly, like it makes us nervous. But it but is it's coming out soon. Yeah. yeah, Nick is going to be my Pacha. He's going to be my John Goodman. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Nick, do you even understand the reference, or am I, am I, I stretching here? Uh, the Pacha, have no. You, have you, John Goodman? Yes. Have you seen Emperor Emperor's New Groove? Ages ago. Oh, okay. It's been okay. a while. Well, I mean, the two main characters is Cusco the Llama and right. then uh, Pacha, which is the villager that walks with them. Ah, so okay. So you're going you're, you're gonna to be the sensible one. No. You're also going to be the one that apparently one-shots me anytime I disagree. With you. Don't know Step what you're talking line, about. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like All simulation. Situation, we know the power <laughs> dynamic here in the group. I'm going to be the loud mouth and you, you're like, I am uh mouth from the goonies and you're going to be sloth essentially yep yep it's going to be it's going to be interesting it'll uh open up a new avenue of i think uh rp for me uh that's for sure and i'm excited to try out this funky build that i have too <laughs> cool yeah i'm curious to see if you're going to use a voice besides your own do you do you have like uh that that cartoony actor voice like that sideshow that you got in your pocket some more no no so you <laughs> like my character dies this is my character's twin brother. We sound identical. I mean, I can I can do like a, an Indian accent. That's what I used to do for GTRP. I can go around talking like this for the entire podcast if we wanted. But then Goliath, is, uh, you know, Goliaths aren't Indian sounding. So yours could be if you wanted to. I'm like, do you Your have like a man. wild? Can you do something cartoony? Can you sound like this sometimes? I mean, I could. It's whether <laughs> I wanted to or not. <laughs> Do you want to do that for two hours? Uh, yeah, it's it's I you know it's uh, so far the do characters you want I've played sound so stupid <laughs> and burn your fucking voice. You want to sound like a cartoon? Maybe you don't maintain. have a choice. I'm gonna. Make I think you it's feel kind guilty. of funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm full of shit. Disregard me. Uh, so that's the D and D podcast that we're be- we're going to be doing under the uh, Casual Master Quest um, name. So look out for that. Uh, so moving on from the podcast, from Amanda's upcoming birthday party, uh, Glenn, what yeah. else have you had uh, been up to this week? Well, it's just been a lot of D and D. I'm working on yours and Ready to Roll's doing another one, uh, and so uh. they're happening on the same day too. Like 
this one oh, we're recording at a certain time, does and that then mean like we four. Do them? I mean, you probably can if you want. I'm not. I'm not taking. I'm not measuring. I'm just hard. happy to be a part of everything. So, but you, there's you're not going to take the measuring tape out. No, but there's. I'm going to say I'm a solid. This similarly when it comes is to going to be all on Twitch with no, you know, editing or podcast format. So. Um, theirs will be absolutely a different format. Um, but yeah, just also working on, uh, my PC. I've been having problems. We kind of messed with it earlier. Right. I got some advice from you guys. And then, um, we're in my game day shirt because, uh, K-State is 3-0. Woo! Woo! SEC team on the road, which is the first time yeah. it's happened since like Fuck 1980 SCT, something. I uh, hate, oh, hate yeah, the SEC just, so It's always much. been a struggle. Yeah. Oh my God. Both of your shirts had the word, uh, game in it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I think mine says pride. Pride. Hell <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Uh, All good thing. Games and pride. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, that's me right now. So I've been having PC issues as well. Um, I recently, oh yeah, no, I recently upgraded my uh, CP uh, PC. I talked about this last week. I got a new CPU and a new motherboard, and so I was worried about some OS issues. Uh, you know having them all together but and so apparently when you just swap out the cpu it's not a big deal but because i got a completely different type of cpu i had to get a different motherboard and there's oh. some like hardware dependencies with the os yeah. um and so i've been getting I, I got a couple blue screens um this week and Oof. but i managed to figure it out somehow by doing a couple of driver updates and things have been a little funky with certain applications and i've had to reinstall them um i found out i'm so sorry I mean, it's not it's oh. like the biggest issue was reinstalling Destiny because I didn't know about it before I uninstalled it. Like Destiny wouldn't open like it would open, but it would run as a background process. And Whoa. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I need to figure out what's going on. And I'm like, like it's scan and repair. The right layer. <laughs> yeah. And so I just uninstalled it. And the moment I uninstalled it, I found a Reddit thread about uh, Destiny 2 having a specific issue with AMD 3, uh, the third generation processors. And there was a hot fix, uh, like a patch that fixes it. And so I didn't need to uninstall it. And so you I'm just sitting, had to update it. I just had to like patch this in and i'm sitting there like all right i'm gonna re-download 91 gigabytes oh, uh, and i had to have it capped nice. because i have to have it capped <laughs> because otherwise it chews up the bandwidth and then eugene can't use the internet so yeah uh, oh, you ooh, fucked up yeah and then um beyond Senpai, that ooh. the last interesting thing that's happened this week um is i'm part of a fashion program within my program and it's a year-long thing and it's gonna be the last thing i do and we're looking at uh, sustainable uh, fashion, uh, solving oh, like using like hemp and stuff like that as a source for the like. Is it a is it a is it a base material thing? Yeah, it can be like how how do we make the fashion industry sustainable? Not necessarily like fashion industry in general. So, but whether it's finding new sources for textiles, how do we effectively, do we efficiently recycle existing textiles? Mm -hmm. uh, because high and fast fashion is an issue like when we talk about brands like H&M there's just so much um they just put out so many pieces of clothing for so cheap that nobody ever feels the need to spend money on quality items that last longer and oh. that are better for the environment right there's a whole bunch uh, of factors that go into it but then that's yeah. just an example of like um a so they, this is two universities with three research centers are all co collaborating on this and putting together this team of students, you know, around my age and trying to like come up with possible solutions. And then, so the, we spend the first eight months, uh, workshopping and prototyping ideas. And then we actually make a prototype and put it to market at the end of the last four months. Wow. And is that produced under like a line or something? Or is it just from the university itself? Well, it's from the university, but we're working with the local fashion owner, uh, fashion store okay, owner, cool. who's been doing stuff like this with sustainability for a long time. And somebody else, uh, she started a company. Uh, uh, she started a, she's a CEO of a fair that focuses on sustainable DIY, like local craft stores. Yeah. Awesome. Tell That's you were really saying. Cool. Do you feel like you're fashionable? I, I don't give a shit about fashion. I feel like I have an okay sense. Like I'll just put on a t-shirt and jeans. Uh, like I think I know when to look good and I just dress comfortably most of the time. Um, and I told him even because I had to do a phone interview to get in. And I'm like, yeah, like fashion is not really my thing. I just want to work with people and try something different. They're like, perfect. Come on in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're. I, I'm ah. sure that means you're a different perspective for them, you know? So that's probably why we will take like, anyone yeah. approach. I love it. <laughs> um, Confidence is yeah. key. It's uh, it's expected, man. Yeah. So we had our Powerful. first. Um, 
class yesterday and getting to meet the people I'd be working with closely and the people in charge of the program. It's really interesting and I'm excited. So yeah. So if you see a uh, CMQ clothing line made out of 100% sustainable material and all the proceeds go to charity and some little bit to us, we're the charity. Uh, just a disclaimer. Okay, yeah, thanks. We are um, the charity. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We are. Um, but yeah, let's. Uh, we are. Charity. We are a video game podcast. Um, yes, we, we are, are. We are a video game podcast. Um, let's talk about video games. Um, have there been any video games that any any of us have played together this week? Yes. I would like to think so. Uh, mm-hmm. Not together, together, but we've played maybe at the same time at the same time <laughs> yeah. on different Parallel. parts of a world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And is this by any chance World of Warcraft? Uh, the classic, the classic version, kind. Yeah. Specific, okay. Okay. Yes. My bad. I apologize. So please no, it's tell okay. us. It's classic, tell us about. Tell us about your WoW adventures for the week. Well, I mean, just uh, the clarified, Nick, the reason why we got to say classic, it's kind of like saying, hey, I play RuneScape. Well, some people are like, oh, is that old school RuneScape or is that RuneScape 3, the you know clearly better right. edition of it? And it's like, well, no, I'm playing the better edition of RuneScape 3, of course. Eh. But anyways, yeah. So I'd like to have a little chuckle at Glenn because Glenn's starting to realize that maybe playing on a PvP server wasn't as what it was cracked out to be. <laughs> Nope, it's very different than what I thought it would be, and I did it because the people that are that got got me to play in the first place are on that server, and they kind of love that. And I don't mind. Here's the thing: I want to I want to expand on that a little bit. I don't mind PvP, but it feels targeted when there's no limit on the amount of people on either team. So mm-hmm. like when they don't say, "All right, well, there can only be so many horde or so many alliance on this server. There could be seventy percent." of the server is horde so that every mixed questing area is just i'm fucked as an alliance member i can't quest there because literally all they do is like that's what i ran into is like i've got a level 30 warrior quest that i'm trying to complete and i can't because the drop rates are so bad for the items i'm looking for when i kill the enemies i need so the only way i can actually be it is by going to the area when the server is the slowest and then then i can probably do it but this quest is taking i've spent seven hours looking for boar tusks or something and i can't i can't and then i tried for another three hours of the day and i got one in three hours and i got killed nine times which is even crazier because in world of warcraft there's an honor system where killing other players gets you honor um and that's not even in place yet so there's no reason for them to kill me they just do it out of spite and then they sit on my body and spawn camp me when they're 12 levels higher than me. And I'm like, what is the joy for you in this? Like, you're playing a troll, but you are actually a troll playing at that computer. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they were a troll under a bridge playing a troll trolling me. (laughs) So anyway, you're right. It's not what I thought it was, uh, but there is ways around it. I loved, did Scarlet Monastery last night for like three hours. (sighs) So good. Is that a dungeon? Yeah. It's a, yeah. uh, A dungeon uh, area, even. Because there's four different dungeons and it's in like separate wings in one building, mm-hmm. each its own uh, separate dungeon, if you will. Okay, and I got um, the Berserker's helm and his shoulder pauldrons from the uh, from the armory. Uh, helm and shoulders. Yep. Yeah. No, s- Captain spin the wind. Yeah, and I rolled. Uh, I rolled and won them against our other warrior too. <laughs> like, <laughs> I felt kind of bad, but they're awesome. So. <laughs> My favorite thing, like, that is the one area I'm so excited for. But lately, I've been stuck in stockades. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, j- I just hit level 26 last night. Okay. And so it's like, again, I'm trying to catch up to Glenn, but Glenn always seems to be one step ahead. And it's like... <sighs> yeah, I just... I'm halfway to 37 now. <laughs> Roll a fucking different character for the love of... Holy shit. Well, I just want to get to 60 so I can do the fun raid stuff and get the best gear. But then once I hit 60, I'm not going anywhere. So, I, I mean... I can't stay ahead of you forever because there is a ceiling, so. Um, I think that's just a diplomatic way of um, Glenn trying to tell you to get good, Tyler. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, no, it sucks because the the biggest (laughs) concern I have at this point is because I've seen this happen before where somebody like tries to get me into an MMO and like, yeah, you can play with us. And so it's like, okay, I'll play with you. But then it's like, oh. But wait, first you gotta catch up to me. He he he. And so it's like, I'm level 20. Alright, I'm level 1. I'll, you know, eventually catch up to me. And so it just, like, this 
carrot on a stick motherfucking treatment where it's like, okay, uh, can we play together so we we'll level up? Oh, yeah, but you gotta catch up to me. I'm 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 level thirty seven now. You're only twenty six, senpai. And it's like, goddamn, s- slow the fuck down, or play a character that we can both play together. What's the fuck? But then point if I start over, I've got to play that character for thirty hours before I can play with you, and that's if you don't play at all during the thirty hours that I'm catching up to your character. Big and we've this. got a guild. And there's, uh, Riss is on all the time, and she's level 24, and is constantly trying to group with people and has nobody to play with, and she hates solo questing. Anytime I get on, somebody will talk, saying, hey, how are you doing? I'm like, good, how are you? And then they'll just log off. I'm like, cool, great conversation. Your (laughs) your guild is, like, it almost feels like uh, an actor's hall, if you will. Like, I'm busy trying to perform, and it's like, hey, guys, how's it going? Be quiet, I'm practicing over here. It's like... We're not, okay. uh, no one RPs. Uh, no one fucking wants to talk because they're too busy doing their own shit. Well, I mean, they're, honestly, they're, a lot of them are friends. I've gotten like more they've... interaction out of random people than the guild in the guild chat. In the guild, like talking? You can talk to people yeah. that you're randomly grouping with? <laughs> yeah, it's called party chat. <laughs> oh, I've never used it because I've always just been in Discord. Oh, well cool <laughs> i just don't like the idea that i joined the server for uh essentially no reason at this point because uh it, th- thankfully nick and this is uh, what i was trying to tell you big brain this glenn if you make a new character guess what i can also make a new character <gasps> i would do that with you <laughs> <laughs> For the audio listeners, Tyler made a funny face. It was Um, a great face. A beautiful face. Probably something that could not be properly described, but it it It's like an angry thumbs up. (laughs) Like, if there's three level of I need to shit my pants, and you, it was like I hit level four, (laughs) it just like soured and dried up. Uh, for anybody who's seen the anime Boku uh, Boku Tashu Sensei, where the you know, the angel gets the halo pulled, and so they have extreme diarrhea coming up on them, I, I know no one else is gonna ever get that fucking reference. But very yeah. sick. That sounds like something I want to watch. Boku Tatsu Senshi. Uh, okay. Anyway, sorry. It's a great anime. Anyways, what were we talking about? World of Warcraft Classic. Yeah, so I would be willing the- to do that with you and play a new character with you and Nick. Actually, I don't really want to. I want to work on my mage. So, anyways, <laughs> the big thing is, yeah, and I'm never touching <laughs> WoW. Oh in no! Any shape or form. Okay, just keep just keep running. So, the <laughs> big thing about playing a frost mage is AOE. You know, awesome. everybody wants. There's two things that people want out of a, a mage: is AOE and free food. And, and free, so, yeah, freezes. The the problem is though. I have rank one blizzard and you get rank two at level 28. So everybody wants to frost mage, but the moment they see I'm 26 and it's like, uh, I mean, that's down. You're only, and let's say you're only going to use, do so much damage. You got to get good. You got to level up more. I'm like, cool. Let me join you. I'll, you know, I'll level up. That's somewhere. how I level up. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, well, if I were back to be fucking cool and drinking while I talk, I'll do it too. Okay, but you're the one talking, Tyler. I was not saying anything. I was drinking because I wasn't. I'm not saying anything. So So I'm having fun with it. I'm I'm trying to get the level seven by doing stockade runs, AOE runs, where I'm kind of like, I'm like in baby mode and everybody else like, watch this, rank two blizzard, and everything's like blown up. And I'm like, pew, 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 ice cubes, beware. (laughs) I'm so strong. Behold, mortals, witness me. (laughs) And, And... I do like a quarter of the damage. And it's comical. I'm having fun. Yeah, you'll hit that spike, though. You'll hit it. I am so excited. Hopefully one day, I hope I find a group to where, like, on a weekend where I can just sit down. I can can do my own thing of Scarlet Monastery with those people. I think it's Mm going to be so much fun. Uh, Yeah. And then, much later in the game, I noticed no one ever does Stratholm. I'm not sure if there's a reason for that. That's kind of intimidating. What level is that one at? It's the same level as BRD, so, like, level between 50 and 60. Oh, okay. And, but the problem is that everybody's doing Black Rock Depths. Yeah. Which, I think it's because it's more easily accessible, but I do like... I, I, I fucking love Stratholm. I mean, we talked about, you know, uh, it's a, a giant city filled with dead, and it's the location, you know, if anybody's played Warcraft, I mean, they know that uh, Arthas had to... He chose to destroy and kill his own city... Before the demon, uh, Malganus or some bullshit name, uh, turned him into undead, essentially. 
And so, you know, it was a race against time, him murdering his own people versus the demon good. And this is the aftermath. It's a fucking undead city that, you know, you're trying to clear out and whatnot. Anyways, I'll stop fucking rambling. I've been having a good time. Glenn, how's your experience been with this? Aside from the PvP, it's been really good. Um, and appara- and I found out recently, after talking to people, that uh, that the warrior is the hardest class to solo level. So I is chose. It? That's what they. That's what they're saying. Apparently, because the rogues can DPS and escape. Same thing with priests and stuff. They have escapes. Warriors is just like, yeah, I can stay alive for a while. But like, if there's a group of horde or something, or it's too high level for me, I don't have a way to self heal. I don't unless I'm protection. I can't like fear them. Like, and so it's a little harder, especially as an arms warrior, to do solo questing. Which is why I'm excited that I hit Scarlet Monastery, because, like, tomorrow, that's all they want to do, is just run the armory until we are strong enough to run the last part, get a dope, uh, you know, quest reward for it, and then move on. You know, like, like I think they're, they want to grind it until 42 or something like that, so we're going to be there for a while. <laughs> it's very exciting, because I realize even if I do catch up to where I can play with you, I'm going to be at the minimum level for most of that stuff. So I'm not going to be able to play on equal level with you. I, yeah. I, what I need to do is I need to find somebody who's like uh, at the same kind of mindset and time frame with me. It's like, hey, I can yeah. play a few hours every other day. And well, that's what I'm saying. Like, will- Riss is perfect there. She doesn't like, you know, she needs someone to quest with. And she's what a, level is she? she's a, I think she's a 24 or a 25 arms warrior. Okay. Yeah. Like, she I would will, be really uh, great. I will contact her. How should I contact you? Email? Uh, Discord? Should I uh, send her a, send a carrier letter, pigeon. letter through it? But also, if you want, I know that you said you didn't want to start over, but like, I know that at the beginning of when I stream, you have a couple hours where you could play games. If you ever want to do that, I can start a character and you can start a character and we can only play those characters before you leave for work. Hell and, yeah, brother. And that way we get a couple hours in, they'll, gr- they'll, they'll and grow and level. I'll be the warrior. Okay, cool. Yeah, I want to be a mage. I want to. I want to try a mage. I tried a well, priest, and it's okay. Rules. But yeah, yeah if uh, you want to do I something got, like that, I got a level like ten priest right now. But I've been saving that specifically yeah. so I can play with Nick. Oh, okay. Uh, so like, it's like I wanted to make a healing character, but only if I'm going to play with somebody who's going to tank or DPS. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem is though, uh, the priest. Is it a priest? Yeah, the character's called the priest. Sorry. Much like you, I get priest and cleric mixed up in D&D and World yep. of Warcraft. So, like, you know, you're a priest that wears cloth, but you're also fighting with a mace and you're smiting. So it's like, what yeah. the fuck is going Feels on? Very like, it messes with yeah. me. Yeah. And uh, just to completely sidetrack, I just discovered, somebody told me, I think it was Dungeon Dudes from uh, YouTube, uh, a very popular D&D group. They say cleric is the easiest class for a beginner to start off with. So, Nick, why don't you play a cleric? Um, That just seems boring. Why would I want easy? Just do what I did and choose the hardest thing to play the first time in. (laughs) What the (laughs) fuck is that? Warlock? Arms Warrior. (laughs) Oh, uh, and World of Warcraft. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about D&D? Yeah, we're talking about D&D here. Yeah. Oh, cleric? Yeah, because because also we should clarify. We should clarify. I believe if we're talking about WoW and if Tyler says Nick, he's not talking about me. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, you did say you would never touch it. I'm talking about my other best friend, Nick, who, you know, Nick with the C. Yeah, so because I'm not NIK. gonna, I'm not gonna touch WoW. You have to put, you I have would... to pay me a tremendous amount of money to play WoW. Yeah, just like you're never gonna touch Uno. I hate that game, but I never said anything <laughs> about not touching that game because now I've learned to like let my anger subside when I play that game. It, the, the difference, zen focus yeah, practice? just the di- difference between Uno and WoW it's being that I have absolutely have under. no interest in World of Warcraft. That That's game fair. is. You and I me. have played together. And I was, like, it was great because I was trying out something new, but I gave it a go. I did. It's not like I'm talking about, I'm not no, I'm not did. talking I, shit about I a game that I haven't game. touched, you know? Yeah. I absolutely agree. You gave it a shot. You decided it wasn't for you. That's why, I mean, I've made it clear, even when I'm jokingly suggesting you should join. It's like, don't do it. It's yeah, like, no. Yeah. I'm barely holding, I, I, like, <laughs> I'm starting to find reason not to play. But because honestly, go ahead. I was going to say, but. I wanted to get back to what those game dudes said. I feel like that's super wrong. What, the idea that clerics are the yeah. easiest uh, class for somebody to start off they've with? They've got channel divinity, they've got spell slots, they've got other features. Just give somebody a champion fighter and let them go. You hit things, you hit them hard, and you hit them easier. Champion fighter. Yes. 
All right, <laughs> this is this is video this video game time. We we we've done the D and D stuff. Oh yeah, stuff, video game. So video game yeah, podcast. Moving so on from World of Warcraft. <laughs> moving on from World of Warcraft, <laughs> unless we had. So the speaking of games that I like, the, I keep finding reasons not to play uh, World of Warcraft Classic, uh, so I can spend times on uh, more time on Minecraft Tekka on a server that is now uh, officially dead. Unfortunately, oh, no. how so? <laughs> yeah. It's very upsetting because, it, you know, it's Brandon, my wife, and I. Uh, we're playing together. Problem is, though, my wife refuses. She's like, we can't waste electricity in this house, so I must shut off my computer and, you know, as well as the server because she owns the server. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Amanda's in the chat. Whoops. <laughs> 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 I think my balls just shriveled right back up when I saw her. <laughs> <laughs> she said, What? <laughs> Motherfucker, you say what? And so, because of that, Brandon can't play whenever he wants to. I can play whatever I want to because I can get on the computer. And and she can, you know, same thing. So, Brandon has given up playing because he doesn't access it and he doesn't want to ask her every fucking time. And so, she got bored because she doesn't know what to do. Meanwhile, I'm making, like, Dr. Frankenstein's lab over here. So, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, cool looking house, cool looking house. What the fuck is going on here? It looks like a, a Mozart painting made out of blocks going on. That's my place right now. And I just keep playing. I'm having a good time. Unfortunately, nobody, you know, the, uh, the other two people, they don't care anymore. Mm. Uh, as in my wife and my best friend. And it's kind of upsetting because they're actually playing a different server on Minecraft together on with different mods. So it's like, is our server dead then? It's like, do I keep playing? Because it's just like... It could, and then I hear Brandon in the background. It's like, you never play. I'm like, motherfucker. When's the last time you got on? Like, I've tripled, like, the amount of house stuff I have. Like, it is comically, like, so a is, huge difference. Is the other server, like, an official server? Or just the server that's always oh, on no, that's, that somebody else has that you guys know? It, it's essentially mm-hmm. uh, for the server that I'm talking about that they're giving up on. It's a server that's run by my wife. It's on her computer. Right. And since she shuts off her computer to save money, my best friend can't get on whenever he wants to, so he lost interest real quickly. And the new server that they're playing is something that Brandon is hosting on his computer. It's Ah, all private servers. Okay. Nothing public. And now Amanda's trying to convince us to join that new thing, because that's now the flavor of the month from for them motherfuckers. And it's always on, though, yeah? (laughs) I have no idea. Ask Brandon. (laughs) I'll do that at the no. beginning of the game They're when we play D&D, just to trigger things. Too good things. for Tech at Light, but I still keep playing Tech at Light. I have made my first high-voltage solar array, which is something that will take anywhere between 1 and 200 hours of uh, Minecraft time on it, so I spent a lot of fucking time on that shit. To make one thing? To make one thing, yes. I'm not kidding you. Like, the amount of... Because, let's put it in perspective, you can make a solar panel, let's say that takes me about 10-15 minutes. Easy enough, right? Sure. To make a low voltage of that, you need to make eight solar panels. So, okay, so that's, you know, eight for one of those. To make a medium voltage, you need eight of the low voltage. So that's 64 64, of the... Yeah, so... And to make a high voltage, you need eight of the medium. So, you know, eight times... That's like 512. uh, 256 solar panels. Why in the world I believe It it, it takes more and more time as you're running out of resources in your given area, so it's harder to search and search. And so it's just been so fucking, you know, time-consuming just to make this one fucking block. But I've done it before. It's a goal. It's fun. I'm building everything else at 512. (laughs) Okay, so... Get fucked, Tyler. But that's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. No matter me. what, that's a crap ton of work. Yeah. yeah. That's even more time than you had said. So that's like uh, a base case 10 minutes. That's 5,000 hours easy. Ah. Uh, 5,000 minutes, sorry. Minutes. 5,000 minutes. Yeah. It but doesn't still, take, that's, yeah, a, that's long, a long, okay, long so time, my friend. Whew. Now I got to pull my calculator out because Nick is scaring me. So, oh, whoops. Uh, let me pull that away so that it's not hitting the stream. 512 times. 15 minutes that's 7600 minutes divided by 60 that's 128 hours yep wow Which, with, within reason it's just to make this one tiny little block that that's makes like so much five fucking... days oh my he, god the most the most upsetting thing is 
after I made this one block, it's still not enough energy to power the shit I want to do. So how many what? more so do you have I to ma- make? I think I need to make at least t- uh, two total. So I'm working on the second one, but I'm playing by myself. So it's like, I'm on this empty how street. Long on the would, how much would it expedite it with if you, if you had extra hands on that? I mean, if we were making a team effort, I mean, just split that by, you know, I think that's the equal divide. So, so it'd be if five, it, it'd be divided by three if it then. Took five, if it took five days to make something, we had five people and they each focus on their own separate Just take thing. a day. Yeah. Be- huh. Yeah, it would just take a day because take like. Take it from 130 hours to like 24. It'd be crazy. There's so many different directions that you could focus on getting the materials for this. Like, uh, for example, one, you need a shit ton of glass. So maybe you're just mining a bunch of cobblestone or sand and that's your thing for the day and that's what I'm doing. Or I need a shit ton of coal dust, which just means I need a shit ton of gold, coal, so I'm mining. Or I need to get rubber for the wiring, so I'm taking an electric tree tapper to these fucking trees and getting tree resin to make into rubber. And so, like, each time I need to do something, I'll just spend, like, you know, two hours focusing on that one thing and just spending a bunch of time. So, yeah, if I were to dole out the task and we all were to team out in the... I'm sorry, my wife just said, I have a low-voltage solar array in the chest, it's yours. There it's it goes, like, 15 minutes. Oh, yay! Thank you, honey, I only need 63 more. <laughs> cool. But it's eight. That's eight of them, man, that's... That helps. That's Every more than an counts. hour, you yeah. know? And so, the one thing that's given me, like, it's my little grace with this whole situation is... There is a machine in this mod called the Mass Fabricator, and it consumes energy and it creates an item called UU Matter, which you can turn into anything, pretty much. Okay. Any material I need. So, with the high voltage solar ray, it's powering through these machines, it's making UU Matter. So, it means instead of having to like hunt for coal or something, I can you just take need this just energy one of them, say, right? Yeah, it's like, fuck you, I need coal. And so I, I'm, I'm by AFKing. I am producing energy enough energy to power this machine. That if I just you know AFK, I'll eventually get the like this ditto uh, or mu equivalent of uh, like all the energy I could possibly want or the uh, the materials for it. Mm-hmm. So essentially, as long as the server is running. I will eventually get enough raw material, if you will, to make an, uh, another high voltage solar array. Hmm. Like I, I hit that step to where Could things you are starting to become Could you create one of those for ultimate. every like type of thing you need and just have them all run at the same time? Oh, uh, what do you mean by that? Well, because each machine can convert something into you, you know mass amounts of one item. Could you like, then uh, make a machine for each? type of item you need to create a solar array and just have them all going while you're AFK? You actually can. It's horrifying. I've seen Brandon do it once before where he has a mass fabricator to produce the UU matter to create, let's say, copper over here. And then he has another machine. Like, he has... He made a automated solar panel factory. There you go. Where he just has to stand there and... Yeah, but once you do that, it's like, you just sit there and you wait. It's like, what the fuck do you... Like, what's the point of Minecraft at that point if you're just... Let well, then you can do other do things, and then your solar panel array is being made while you're doing other things. Oh, well, what am I doing then? I don't yeah, know, that, making that's... things to connect to the solar panel array? I was gonna say, make, like, if you're making more solar arrays, it's like, you got a machine that's doing that for already. Am I digging for more extra materials, I guess? But at that point, eventually, you're going to have so much energy to make that raw material that it's just going to make it on, like, that's, that's fucking Skynet from the Terminator, where it becomes self-aware. It's like, I don't need you anymore, Tyler, to make solar arrays. I've become all-powerful, Tyler. And eventually, it just creates a Tesla coil that kills me. That won't happen, but it's scary. That's a crazy about, feature of Minecraft. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's say, imagine a mod on Minecraft where if you create so much technology near each other that it becomes self-aware and it becomes like its own creature. I've yet to no, touch okay. Minecraft yet, so uh, yeah, I need to when I do... Off. You still need the joy of punching a tree. Actually, I just realized both of you now own Minecraft. I don't think yeah. I, either of you uh, have opened it yet, have I you? Need to. Not, not yet, because there's a game that I've been playing, but before we get to that, Tyler, do you have any other games you played this week? You bet your sweet pumpkin ass. Or, sorry. I'm sorry, that was rude to me. Your sweet pumpkin spice ass that I do. <laughs> I don't know how that made it any different. I mean... You know, pumpkin versus pumpkin fall spice? Fall time, have you, yeah. Pumpkin spice. Have you had regular Tis pumpkin? Have you had pumpkin spice? Because... I- 
It's a real difference. I don't like what North Americans do with pumpkin. They defile a sacred vegetable that we use. Look, just because we fuck a pumpkin doesn't make it weird, okay? Oh, you mean the jack-o'-lantern thing or the seeds thing? What are you talking about talking here? about pumpkin spice. I'm sorry. Pumpkin spice is absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Eh, it's alright. And then pumpkin pies are also not my favorite thing. I like pumpkin pies. Because I in, won't lie. Because <laughs> with us, we we use we use pumpkin to make savory dishes, and so I cannot uh, wrap my head around pumpkin being used in a sweet thing. As a dessert, yeah, yeah. Huh? Roll for initiative. <laughs> oh, you want me to one shot no, you again? I, don't. <laughs> is this a? Is don't this, make a roll a new character, okay? When you say we, yeah. who do you mean when you say we? Indians. Uh, so, Indians. Yeah, okay, I didn't so know if it was a Canadian thing too. Like I didn't know. Oh like, no, but it's it's very much this, like we have our Thanksgiving at the correct time first of all, um, and so mm-hmm. all the pumpkin uh, stuff is popping up now. But uh, no, Indians like in Indian food, we use pumpkin uh, primarily as a savory thing. I don't think there's a dish that uses pumpkin as a sweet thing, and so I just like I just can't wrap my head around the fact that pumpkin's being used as like a as like a, the core ingredient in a pie or like uh, there's pumpkin spice things. It makes no sense to me. I love it. I don't really like. So, I like the smell of it more than anything else. I I'm not a big fan of consuming anything aside from pumpkin pie. Like pumpkin spice is fine, but I like I mean, the like the set like the Glade plugins that smell like pumpkin or right. whatever that is. Because that makes pumpkin me spice, it, like sensorily, it, it reminds me of home and like that time of year. And I live in California now, so there's right, not really right. seasons, you know. So. It reminds me of that makes sense. times, yeah. but it's the, smell is, of summer, the yeah. smell is much more important to me than the taste, honestly. That's my Nick, uh, have you ever messed with, like, a sweet potato? Oh, man. Like, oh, I, like, Glenn's like, getting hard right now. I like sweet I potato, sweet but, potatoes. like, sweet potato and what? Uh, I mean, eventually, like, uh, to get to the pumpkin spice level, you know, the, for a sweet potato, for example, which is of similar build, they would start to add stuff like uh, cinnamon and brown sugar to it mm-hmm. at the top. Well, okay, but uh, sweet potato makes sense, because even though we use it in savory dishes, sweet potato inherently is sweeter. So it would mm-hmm. make sense that if you take something sweet and put it into a sweet dish, pumpkins aren't sweet. What about squash, then? Squash, we, I don't think we get, we get variants of, uh, like, we get a lot of variants of the gourd-like you know, vegetables and yams, fruits. essentially. I, like, this is getting into, like, Thanksgiving territory Yeah, for we, Americans, we, but... we, like, uh, we do, we make a curry out of yams. Oh. Because honestly, like, you're right. Pumpkins, like, like yeah. inherently, if you have it by itself, it's not very sweet at all. No, like, you they're really not. You really gotta add some yeah. shit to it. So, it, like, again, it's just a cultural thing where it makes no sense to me. I've had pumpkin pie before. Some places have made it pretty nice. Like, I, I've enjoyed certain types of pumpkin, especially, like, the homemade ones. But, like, pumpkin spice is not something I can, I, I can't get over that. I really can't. Yeah. I think pumpkin pie is a lot like stuffing. It's another holiday dish or whatever in, right. in North America, and like, like honestly, and, it, and it like, has to be. Tradition, it can be really right? like, good or it can be really, really bad. But they're both the same thing, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. but they definitely that makes don't sense. Taste the yeah. same, you know. <laughs> it had to have been a point to where it's like they had nothing but pumpkins, but they managed to like shine a turn turd essentially to make pumpkins taste good to turn into a pumpkin pie, right, and right. it's just it turned into a staple of tradition. Mm. Right. Like, uh, fucking, uh, I think cranberry. There's, there's, like, hazelnut. I think a lot of spices go into making that pumpkin sweet. Hell you yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. And so that's why pumpkin spice is, I mean, I is a little more true was, to what uh, it is. You know, like, pumpkins aren't sweet. You gotta spice it up a lot and add sugar, and then it's a pumpkin sweet. It's just, it's that what we think of in, in, you know, in the U.S., but... Yeah. yeah, when you think of pumpkin spice, you don't think of the part where, like of the the sugary cream and stuff that goes into it too to give it you know the extra the flavor, if you will. So much. I worked at Starbucks so, for two and a half years. I know how much goes into all those. It's it's a lot. Speaking of of spice, <laughs> yeah, I decided to play a game based off of uh, Nick, uh, best other best friend Nick, uh, is, uh, Nick with the C's recommendation, and uh, it's called Spice and Wolf VR. It was a Kickstarter uh, program game that came, you know, it was successfully done and made for the PlayStation 4. And have either of you heard of the light novel, manga, anime, whatever you want to recognize it as, Spice and Wolf? Nope, negative, no, sir. It, it's I would say probably one of his favorite uh, anime slash mangas, and I really loved it too. Highly recommend it. Uh, Spice and Wolf is about a merchant who met a uh, a deity of sorts who happens to be a wolf, and uh, she was like the wolf of uh, fertility to bless the fields of crops and wheat and whatnot. And uh, eventually, religion fucks it up, and she realizes she's not needed or wanted anymore because you know she might as well be a witch to some people. Hmm. And so she travels with this merchant 
And Spice and Wolf is about a uh, traveling merchant who's trying to make money through a bunch of business dealings and whatnot. And this magical wolf is following him. And, it, you know, it has a lot of seriousness. It, you know, almost has that uh, Death Note level of like, I'm going to outwit another person, uh, you know, with this crazy bullshit science uh, idea. And it's pretty well done, actually. And mm-hmm. it just so happens to have a, you know, a, a wolf, uh, a cute furry anime girl <laughs> along, you know, by his side. And so when I saw this for $25 on, you know, in VR, I'm like, it said, this is going to be a 3D VR visual novel experience. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Yeah, let's do this. I, I bought it you know, this morning, downloaded it, installed it. I'm like, I'll, I'll play about an hour of it at the very least. Nick in the chat is saying it's an economics and romance anime, which is a good way of describing it. So I said I was going to play an hour of it. That way I could talk about it. Two things I'd like to point out. The preface is this what I'm going to you know, talk about here. First one is, apparently, I my forehead gets really sweaty easily, so I had to keep taking off the VR headset to wipe my forehead, clean the uh, my glasses and all that stuff. Everything kept fogging up. It was very vicious. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just, it kind of ruined the experience. Second thing is, I didn't need to take an hour to talk about this game because the game didn't even last an hour. This was a For half 25 hour. 25 bucks? The fr- for 25 fucking dollars, I had a 30 to 45 minute visual novel experience. That kind of ruined my mood on it. <laughs> Glenn, your thoughts about this? That you, feels like a making... bunch of bullshit. That's a decent little chunk of change for not this much. This is Mel you buy a 35... Ground Zeroes bullshit. Yeah, you, you buy a $30 book, even if you read that every day, you're going to finish it in a week because it's probably five, 600 pages if you're really like, if you're not speed reading it, you know? Like, so, and that's I a, mean, that's like, a book. Like, I would much rather just buy a novel then and imagine that, you know, I feel, I know. I'm sure it, I don't know. I'm sure it costs that much to pay the people that made it. Don't get me yeah, wrong I mean, about it, that. Like I but, said, it was a Kickstarter that, you know, got funded by other people already. Mm-hmm. And this is them turning on you know, the seal, the rest of the, make it a profitable adventure. This mm-hmm. is also pure fan service. Like you would have yeah. no interest in this thing unless you've watched the anime or read the manga of this thing. And yeah, uh, I would say it took just a little bit over a half hour to complete the uh, story if you will and there's no button inputs or anything like that for the story mode if you will you're essentially just sitting there and looking around while these two people have a conversation and you know watching them animate and emote you're in a single uh, like a, a water mill if you will and you know it's it felt realistic like like wow i'm in an anime look at me i'm looking around this is cool wow she's really lolly i didn't recognize that this is interesting why is she getting so close to me why is the fbi knocking down my door anyways i got really nervous like i wasn't sure if my wife was nearby so i kept looking <laughs> up at you know uh the uh <laughs> the character's <laughs> eyes I, did, I didn't want to get you know <laughs> be misinterpreted but after that, it let you go into what is called interact mode, which is still same room. And I realized still not using the controller unless you need the pause or whatnot. And you're looking around and actually you do get to use the controller mm. to pet the wolf. Y- you can pet the <sighs> character because this is a Japanese fan service game and you're allowed to pet her head and her tail, which makes sense. I guess there's some people that got into it yeah. and I'm looking at the chat, you know, a checklist. There's a checklist for this interact mode. So, you know, Pat had look at the watermill, look at this broken ladder and shit. And there's one that kind of says some along the lines of eyes up here. So I'm like, do I need to do what I think I need to do? And so it turns out that no, you don't actually, thankfully. So I have no idea what that check mark in the checklist is, honestly. Uh, maybe I got to look up the ceiling. And it, like uh, they tried, you know, tricking people into patting, you know, uh, a wolf, a, a furry's a cups here, and it's like it, it was really awkward. And I kept looking around. Um, there, you stare at a door, and it's like, here, if you stare at this door for three seconds, they'll talk about it. And it's like, okay, fair. You can stare at it, and they'll say, you know, something else. Okay, cool. And like, I got boring real quick. It's like I had no idea what the fuck, you know, the point of it was. Yeah, honestly. If you like Spice and Wolf and you're just like, maybe you're drunk and you just wanted to sit in, in a room with uh, your your beloved characters, or, you know, or one, since you're technically role-playing as Lawrence, the uh, the merchant guy, and you're essentially just sitting here with Wolf Lady. Oh, it's $25 and, uh, for you to be able to pet uh, a furry character um, and experience the thing and not really interact with it, so it's a VR experience. It's not a game. 
It's a VR experience with uh, Horo, yes. Okay. And it, it, I mean, I gotta give her, give the developer credit. Like, she's just doing random things around the thing, and you're just kind of watching her. Hmm. Uh, Nick in the chat is asking, is there a platinum? I was getting gold and silver trophies, so maybe? I don't know what the fuck you do for the what platinum. Do you, what do you get stupid. trophies for? Do you, uh, just looking around and doing, That's like, fucking you, I got stupid. a gold... It's, it's very fucking stupid. That's so fucking I gotta stupid. Fuck sort of a cheap platinum. That's what I'm asking. See, here. like that sounds like a ten dollar game. Doesn't yeah. sound like a twenty five dollar game. Ten dollars yeah. would be totally worth it. Sorry, twenty dollars. Ten dollar experience. It's not a twenty five dollar experience. Yeah. I mean, if for twenty five dollars, if uh, things got a little bit more lewd, because this is definitely a, that kind of game, it felt like it was going in that direction. Uh, I could see where it'd be right. an interest to certain right. people, not me, of yeah. course, because I'm a respectable gentleman. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. it's okay. VR. Cool. Yeah, but Nick, Nick we in chat, chat keeps shouting it's E rated. It's like okay. But Nick, we we earlier we like had to pry you away from the game. I think you have been playing most recently, <laughs> correct? Yeah. So I I bought it up briefly on the last episode. Talked about how I put uh, three hours into a little game called Astral Chain, made by uh, <laughs> Platinum uh, uh, Platinum Software. Is it? I can't remember the name specifically, but the people... Platinum in, Games? Platinum Games, yeah. I was thinking of How From Software. How far are you into it now? Um, I will get to that. Um, <laughs> but just to, just to remind people, um, uh, Astral Chain is a hack and slash um, with Pokemon, where you have these five beasts that you can control and rotate through them as long as you have the energy for it. And there's an energy bar that depletes, and you get more energy by collecting things in the world or killing enemies. Um... So when we last talked about it, I put three hours into it over the week with school and lightly playing Destiny 2. I am now up to 22 hours. That's good. So it's not a lot. 22 but hours. I'm, oh. Wow. I'm pretty sure. So before we started recording, you had to pry me away from it. And I thought I was at the end. Mm -hmm. But in but in good old fashioned platinum game style, a la Bayonetta 1, when you think it's the end, it's not the end. And so there's more. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? How much more could they do? But it makes sense here I because mean, there's an actual story because Bayonetta makes zero fucking sense. This game makes sense. So it makes sense that there's more after the point that I just played. Right. Are you trying to suggest that Bayonetta doesn't have a sensible story? Yes. I'm, okay, let me ask you a question. Have you thrown a large deity-like creature towards either uh, the sun or an other large uh, ominous force that can destroy it? Um, not thrown, but I've crushed the their core. Game. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because um, you can do finishing moves and stuff. And it's crazy, like, even this late into the game, they're, they're introducing new mechanics. Because it took me... Uh, so so you start with the one beast and you have to unlock the remaining four you unlock the the next three pretty quick i'd say about within the first 12 hours 10 hours and then about 70 percent through the story you unlock the fifth which adds a whole bunch of different play styles because there's one with so the fifth one that you unlock is has a shield if it's inactive and close to you you can send it to protect people specifically because you control these beasts with chains uh, and but they're on a leash essentially and they're not an infinite leash so they have to be so that also limits you in certain situations where you might be protecting a civilian and so you can only go so far out before that beast is moved out of position um, so you have a beast one that you can ride you have uh, an archer you have a swordsman you you have uh, one that you can, can they all be active at the same time. Not at the same time, no, but one at a time. Okay. Um, and you have one that's literally just it, it's a. Have you never played Pokemon? Jeez. Yeah. Have okay, but to his merit, there are double and triple and rotation battles. So okay, yeah, yeah. you're right. <laughs> but he's only played like Generation One, so I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Um, oh, but I've seen. You know, there's one of them you can literally wear. You can wear one of the beasts because it's like a floating armor thing. And it has Corella Deville now. Do you just wear it like a scarf? It's, uh, no, you can go inside it, and you can like hover around places, and you can wield its arms as your you own. Can go inside it. Wow. Yeah, it's 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 it, like it adds a bunch of like interesting gameplay mechanics, and they've added a Sexuality. new mechanic now. Um, Do they have a progression too? Like, can they level up their abilities? And yeah. Stuff so like there that? are uh, trees that you uh, you can unlock and uh, give them increase their attack and defense, and there are skills nice. that each of them can learn, and you can have two of them uh, uh, on it at time. Um, and you can also have abilities that you can swap out. So uh, they're more modifiers than anything. And um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. It has a surprising amount of depth to it. Not surprising only because I didn't know what I was expecting when I bought this game. Because uh, I, as I said last week, somebody said that it's 
uh, hack and slash with Pokemon, and I'm like, I want it. So I hadn't really seen gameplay at that point. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I'm almost there at the end, and I'm feeling the itch to 100% everything, because from the start, uh, like, uh, when you're interacting with the environment as well, each of these bees can do different things and interact with different things to un unveil new areas and collect different items and so you need lapras to surf you yeah know. so you'd have yeah, to like you only get lapras like halfway through the story so you have to go back to the beginning area to like unlock that yeah. area so uh, huh. it comes in files all these missions are essentially chapter select and so i'd have to go back and play through the chapters to 100 percent everything which is what i want to do hmm. i think um if the game doesn't eat away at my soul but I'm having a lot of fun <laughs> playing a game that is not Destiny or Overwatch, and I'm happy about that because there are also some other ones coming out soon. There's uh, mm -hmm. Link's Awakening, which I definitely want to try playing through. Um, and yeah, then um, Gears 5, which I still haven't gotten to. Next episode, we'll be able to talk about that. Maybe. Are you guys playing Gears 5? Uh, Gears 5's already out. I'm going to play Gears 5. I really want to, but okay. no, Tyler's talking about Link's I... Awakening. Um, but before we talk about mm -hmm. games coming out... We still need to hear about anything else you've played, uh, Glenn, before we move on to... Oh, uh, I one of my subscribers on Twitch uh, has been playing with me, uh, and apparently he used to uh, play competitively. And, play uh, League of Legends, I apologize. League of Legends. And he played enough with me in the duo that he, he found some... Because apparently there's more than just Riot's pro scene, so there's other like small leagues where basically it's if you're silver you play with other silver players in a league hmm. and then you can get you know you know you get on like the, team the, the minor leagues versus the uh, big yeah, leagues for yeah. So, same thing same thing with overwatch sense. there's university yeah. leagues as well and our university has yeah. a esports esports team nice. but yeah he's he's trying to get me leveled to gold so we can play in the gold league of nice. this one thing as his adc so i'm like that's good because you know like this guy did analytics for an actual LEC team in Europe, so nice. like he he's he knows he knows League, the game, and so yeah. I don't feel like total hot garbage. Right, if, you know he's like, yeah, be my teammate, and I'm like, okay, so that may happen. Placed. We'll see what happens. Okay, but yeah. Um, so we went on a couple of tangents talking about a holiday food to like wow gripes. Um, but moving <laughs> on to like the modular and topic of the show, Glenn, you penned the modular segment this week. Uh, do you want to yeah. lead us lead us off with the question? Yeah, I just thought it'd be really interesting to kind of like delve into uh, the video game world and have each one of us do a little bit of self analysis. So the question is, if you had to choose one video game character who best per personified you, who would it be and why? Um, and why being like, is it because of their physical appearance, their personality, their you know their life goals, that sort of thing? Um, just because this is a really fun in depth character to get to figure out. Uh, not character in-depth question to figure out what people how people view themselves i like that so so to, just to make sure i'm on the right page here this is the character that you, we feel best represents us not what we want to be yes yeah like who yes, as, as our irl characters who do you, who do we identify as in a video game all right nick in the chat amanda i need you guys to help me out here because i'm going <laughs> to pick the wrong character what is the best video game character that represents me in a nutshell? Yeah, that's... I have and an idea. I have a character. I'm not happy with the choice, but it seems appropriate. Now, and if it's one of those things, too, where it is, like, a game based on uh, a show or something like that, that's still fine. Like, if there's a character that they made a game based on a show, and that show has a... Or that show has a character that you feel represents right. you that's uh that's totally fine too so i just want to make sure that no limitations okay uh does anybody have an idea or do you want me to go first i i have an i idea. mean okay. i do too let's, but let's... i kind of want to hear from you guys <laughs> so um tyler how you're how familiar with it are you with the gears of war universe uh there's locusts isn't there yeah uh, well that's that's true uh glenn not at all i have never played a single one of them okay so i remember there's i know one guy oh, i love the aesthetic the, of the game though yeah cool it's like the beginning of gears 4 there's a guy who's farming isn't he yes okay sure i yes. don't know their name <laughs> um, so i i know farmer gear guy a, a single locust <laughs> And that's about it. So in it, uh, there's Marcus. A, Marcus Phoenix, yeah, he's the main character for the first three, and then uh, kind the of semi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there's a character. His name is Damon Baird, um, who is uh, a, he's an asshole. 
He's he's very much like a sarcastic asshole, like in in his interactions socially with people, uh, with like his Doesn't team. Did he betray the people at one point? No. He'd- Okay. No. Oh yeah, he looks like an asshole. Yeah, that's yeah. you. He's he's a very that's sarcastic like asshole, you. but then he still does the job. He still do, like he still helps people out because he has a sense of duty. But then he he's any moment he has, he's like making a snarky like comment or he's trying to like uh, make fun he'll of somebody. He'll save your life, but he'll make you feel bad for it. Kind of, yeah. And then um, so- I I see myself as that with a cross of Clank from Ratchet and Clank. Just throwing out, like, stupid jokes. Not the intellectual side of him, just the, like, the dad jokes. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. Can I make a fun dad joke real quick? Yeah, it's of course. Of making course. me laugh the last Absolutely, last week. father. It's a human joke from World of Warcraft, and he goes, A guy walks into a bar, and he says, I'm a teepee, I'm a wigwam, I'm a teepee, I'm a wigwam. And I said, Relax, buddy, you're too tense. <laughs> <laughs> I've used that joke so many different times. <laughs> I hate how much it makes me laugh, but I love it. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. You okay? Yep. I'm Hello. sorry, the joke is uh, almost 15 years old, so it's like, oh, uh, but I can't laugh. I'm just learning so many new things that are not new. <laughs> new to me. It's like buying a used car. Right. You know? Right. It's new to me. Oh, we can do this? <laughs> the human uh, male and wow jokes are just... <laughs> How does a torn hide in a tree? Your paint is hooves hooves red. Hooves red. And it's like, so it looks like cherries, I guess. Like, what about the what about the the parrot one? The super racist orc joke. <laughs> I don't know what question. the what are the name of the homelands of the orcs. Uh, he just says like Orgrimmar. Uh, or- or- He's Orgrimmar. like, yeah, an orc walks into a bar uh, with a parrot on his shoulder. The bartender asks, "Where'd you get that?" And the parrot answers, "Orgrimmar." They get they got them all over the place. <laughs> so it, I don't know. Ah, I get it. Anyway, I get it. Dad jokes yeah, are fun. I get it. But yeah, um, but yeah, that's <laughs> walks in the bar and says, "That's you know, cool, though. Give me a drink and put it on my bill." And it's like, oh my god. <laughs> 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 I love it. Oh, Jesus guy. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just funny, dude. Cracks me up every time. That's all right, so those good. are my characters. Um, awesome. Tyler, did you did you figure it out? Or should Which we... Which Gears game was your character in, though? He's in all of them, as far as I know. Oh, he's in all of them? Yeah, okay, he's in cool. Yeah. I, because I haven't played the fifth one, so I don't know if he's in the fifth. But he was uh, part of the original for the first three. He was also the main character in Gears Judgment. Um, and then he did make an appearance in Gears of War 4, but not as a playable character. Oh. Yeah, because there's a huge time skip between uh, Gears 3 and Gears 4. So it's a new set of, like, playable characters. But then there's still, like, the foundational, you know... Hero, like, kind of like characters Borderlands, of the, what they do, kind of playable characters from the previous yeah, game or NPCs in the next something, one. something like that. Yeah, it's just that the mm-hmm. the core characters and from one to three kind of like establish the universe from that point on for Gears Four because it's like a twenty year time skip, I think. Time oh, jump. Wow. I, it's it's a substantial mm-hmm. time jump. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh God, I just forgot that the human has this one like twenty second long joke that's so fucking. Stupid. Oh, the band of power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just so Lord of the I have an idea for a great movie. It's oh, don't about do this two to me. gnomes who find a bracelet of Get power. Out of they here. have to take Stop it to it. the burning steps and I'll cast it into the cauldron. I they form be- the Brotherhood of the Bracelet. Along the way, they're trailed by a murloc named Gotham, who's obsessed <laughs> with the bracelet and nine bracelet boogeymen. It could be a three parter called Ruler of the Bracelet. The first part would be called The Brotherhood of the Bracelet, <laughs> followed by A Couple of Towers, with a climantic ending called Hey, the King's Back. <laughs> Such a fucking 2004 joke. All right, Tyler, hit us with your character if you have one. Okay, so let me say off uh, things, and it sounds uh, you tell me if they sound like characteristics that might be similar to me. Morbidly obese. <laughs> Glenn's like, eh. uh, loves to make a game out of things. Yes, has the occasional flair to dress up in costumes to look eccentric. Yes. Loves to Money new uh, things. L- uh, loves doing stuff to make gold. Yes. <laughs> Does anything to get the the coin. Yes. If you've agreed to all these things, then perhaps you've picked the character Wario. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very upset by this. <laughs> the like honestly, you, you know I like Waluigi, but I am literally the personification Wah. of fucking Wario. <laughs> It's a wee Wario. <laughs> it, 
if you guys have counter counter arguments, please, for the love of God, get me out of I, this fucking show. I, I don't want to be Wario. I don't have too much experience with the with the Mario universe, uh, but from everything I've seen of Wario, it seems also, about right. He loves garlic. I love garlic. Uh, garlic. He farts a lot. I do too. Uh, he drives a motorcycle. <laughs> I wish I could drive a motorcycle. And uh, he does dance rhythm games. <laughs> I mean, if it helps, uh, he's DDR. not he's not the worst bad guy, so it's kind of like, it's it, like, it'd be like identifying with Team Rocket. You're not really hurting anybody. Yeah. No, I mean, like, Wario is a dickbag that constantly is trying to do schemes to get himself money. And uh, to that end, you know, he's willing to, you know, he's lawful evil. He doesn't essentially kill people for money but he'll try to swindle you out of it right and right. by god if i can convince people to play a game to where they give me money i'm down for I actually maybe i'm the opposite of worry now that i think about it because i try to play games to give people stuff Ugh. or maybe the big <laughs> scheme is they'll stay longer with me so i can get more money out of them well by i mean I also I, I didn't interpret the question as you having to share entire like personalities so if you identify to some extent with wario I then mean, you're wario I'm identifying with wario in a way that i feel uncomfortable let's let, let's be honest here i do not uh, feel happy knowing that i have a lot of comparisons <laughs> to wario that's fair um glenn and who who do you identify There's with yes the uh, last thing i realize oh. wario does in the, his very first appearance, he kidnaps a, a princess. I believe uh, Princess Daisy. I also kidnapped a princess. And now I'm married to her. Anyways, uh, you're saying. FBI, open up. I was trying to be romantic to my Could sweet you be wife. Because she's no a one. princess to me. Now she's a queen. And she got me, the Wario. Happy birthday, Amanda. Yay, yeah, happy birthday, Amanda. <laughs> Glenn, I'm sorry, I cut you off. What no, you're fine. Character? I didn't even start. Okay, fine. What character? Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I was having a hard time with this because I thought it was an interesting question, but like at the, on the same note, like most of the video games I play are things where you create a character, and that character can't just be you. It's not really a personality thing. I'll Aside from, like, the Dragon Age games and, you know, um, like, Skyrim and very fantasy, usually, or, like, hot, like, space opera sort of thing. Very epic, usually. Um, and I don't really usually identify with a lot of those characters, so I thought of maybe anime characters who they may have adapted vid adapt adapted video games that I appreciate the story for. Um, and that I think I'm, like, a weird combination of uh, Duel Maxwell, who's the pilot of Death Scythe in Gundam. Uh, Gundam Wing and um, Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist, because <laughs> he's like a fiery, shorter guy who loses his temper pretty easily. But then there's that you know carefree you never side. Lose that's... your temper? What are you talking? Oh, about? Oh, you would. I during the football game today. I'm the worst during sports, and I'm very competitive. Uh, when I comes saw to... the 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 like pure poison in your eyes whenever you saw a horde walking towards you. <laughs> oh gosh! You're like, yeah. I'm not gonna click on you to make it look like I'm looking at you. I'm pretending I'm ignoring you. Otherwise, I literally I don't even. Have noticed I don't you. even target you have a them. Chance to walk away. I'm not even gonna target you. Just walk away. Oh God, why are you attacking me? Yeah, I don't even fight back anymore. <laughs> if they wanna, if they wanna gank me with five, a full party of guys that are ten levels higher than me, what am I gonna do? Like, okay. And then thanks. you go into like the same circle. Of, There's no point. Yep. Them attacking me. There's no water. There's the duo. There's the there's the uh there's no, sorry, there's the Edward Elric. Yeah, just getting angry about things. No, it's not necessarily about my physical What's characters. What's the name of his brother? Alphonse uh, Elric. Alphonse. Yeah. Alphonse. My, ironically enough, my younger brother is very much like Alphonse. He's a little taller than me. I don't and he yeah, even when he does get his body back. He Are you referring to the brother, brother that you shamed and vulgarly <laughs> uh, no, cussed out? No, no, no. The first, I'm a little you know. smarter than him. He's a little calmer than I am. Um, you know, a little taller. Yeah, he's not quite well, like Alphonse. He's anymore, he used to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's my. Uh, I'm. I'm the Eevee to his Charizard. Yeah, I'm just kidding. If you reverse. Anyway, so that's well, me. I can kind of see the I Edward did, I did because check. I'm not too familiar with the the Gundam characters all all that much. Mm -hmm. But Full Metal Alchemist is one of my favorite things ever, and so I can kind of, so I can kind of, I can kind of see it. Yeah. What did you say to me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of that sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I I strive for the the um, the plateau, the, the middle, stone. the middle of the line. I I'm usually a peaks and valleys guy. Very Michael Scott, very 
uh, Edward Elric. I can be very right. focused and very good at what I do, but then I can also get very angry and, you know, off kilter because I fluster myself, you know? Right. So mm-hmm. You're just walking down the street. Thank you. you see, I'm glad you can see uh, that. Uh, I like it. As, as crazy walk- as he is. <laughs> Wait, can you guys hear me? What's going on here? What's this black magic? No, no, I can hear you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we, we just have kind a good habit of talking at the same time. Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, all right, so that was actually a fun one. Um, trying to remember, like you were saying that uh, you had a hard time thinking of a character, and how many times have either me or Tyler posed a question that we're like, oh, so blah, 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 how do you feel about this? Like, I have no fucking idea, but you wrote the question. I'm like, I know, but I still have no idea. So don't worry, <laughs> you're not alone there. <laughs> Um, I just, I like that it was challenging and we could give input based on, and you guys know each other a lot better than I do. And I'm like still kind of learning who you guys are and just having a different perspective. And like, I absolutely don't see some of the things you say about yourself about Wario. Like, I don't see some of them, you know, but like, I mean, but I, Nick's like, yes, that's you, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, all right, cool. I got, I'm, I'm fucking learn, upset I'm with this level of uh, self-reflection I had to do here. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody ever wants to think of themselves. About Wario? Yeah. I don't want to think of myself as a Wario. <laughs> Hell no. Okay. I'm an angry, an angry tiny, short alchemist is- with, no, with only two real limbs, so, you know. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? My, Life. My main <laughs> attack is gastronomical <laughs> intestinal uh, <laughs> disruption. <laughs> I shit my pants to glory. That's that. That's how I win. It's like, I, I don't want that to be me. Hey, man, a win's mm-hmm. a win, whether by an inch or a mile, so just take it. Bam. It's truth. All right, so... um. <laughs> Moving on to the topic of the show, it's our favorite, favorite developer to talk about. Um, no, it's not EA. We like to shit about EA, but we like to talk about Kojima and anything that Kojima might do or has done or maybe will do or never do. We don't know. Um, Tyler, you put a link to the same exact thing that I put a link for. Fuck you. Yeah. It's the same link. <laughs> it's the exact same link. I just wanted link. to That's say, like, insane. Did you not see the link? You know what? Is my work not good enough? No, I didn't. <laughs> Fuck you, I just deleted your link. Um I didn't realize this game was Hideo Kojima. Uh it's it's coming but from we just Kojima talked about this, like- It's coming from Kojima Productions, his own company once he split off from Konami. Oh, okay. Um Got and it. we finally know what Death Stranding is going to look like. We don't know what the game is still. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. But we know what the game's going to look like. And um it's definitely interesting. There's a like I briefly read this um this article coming from Kotaku. Um, and there's some interesting elements to it. Um, and I'm gonna pick this one out because I thought this was a cool mechanic. So, you, before you set off on a mission, so, uh, uh, they recently demoed an hour-long gameplay of, uh, Sam going out on a mission. Sam being the titular character played by, uh, Norman, uh, Reedus. Norman Reedus. Yeah. Um, and so you get to, like, pick your loadout and stuff before you go out on your mission and stuff. And what was interesting is that you can, um... Instead of like it all going away, like in, in video games, when you put when you select your equipment, it goes away to this little magical pocket. Instead of that happening, it actually physically goes onto your body, and you can choose which parts of your body you'll put your rope climbing gear or like the cargo that you have to deliver. And that not only is affects the aesthetics, but it also affects uh, the balance, which I thought was really really smart. I, I I thought that brings an interesting uh, dynamic to the gameplay. So if you have to set oh, yeah. uh, like uh, build a little ladder, because we've seen them do that, build a ladder to bridge like a horizontal gap like between two cliff faces or whatever. And so your balance of the gear that you've put on will affect how easily you can cross or how much you have to work against the, the you know the shifting of balance or whatever. So physics is another not usually accessed portion of this game, which is really neat. Yeah, yeah. Huh. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure some. People that like to have their games kind of cake fed to them, like, will be like, Ugh, this is too hard, you know? I mean, difficulty is the least of my worries with this fucking game. <clears throat> uh, I understand the top priority. Of, uh, like, the fucking bridge baby. It's still a big question to my day. What the fuck a BV or bridge baby, as this baby is called, what, what the point of it is. And I believe at one point it's explained that the bridge baby is going to be what uh, gives the ability for uh, Sam here to uh, see creatures of sorts. Hmm. This, and the, like the the 45 minute video that uh, Mr. Kojima shows, you know, it's all in Japanese. So, you know, you do your best to make sense of it all. There was a scene where he was just sitting there playing the harmonica and the baby was enjoying it. It's like, but why? Or like What's the singing point? in the bath. Like, I remember it's seeing just like, a clip of that. Is there, a, like, a Simpson where you gotta raise the hearts with it? Otherwise, the baby turns on you? What the fuck? You know, like, do you have to make the baby happy? 
maintain the relationship with the child. Oh my gosh, it, it's like uh, fucking Stardew Valley. I'm trying to keep you up <laughs> ten, you know, the twelve hearts, damn it. Give me the fucking star fruit, whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's interesting. It's this this game is is something else. Um, we've we've had plenty of discussions over the year. I think I think you could probably pick out easily half a dozen episodes where we've talked extensively about what the fuck Kojima's doing and what kind of drugs is he taking to make this game. Uh, but now that we're finally getting some actual flesh to like you know yes. cover up the bones, it seems interesting. Somebody talked. Somebody mentioned that it's like it felt like Breath of the Wild. One of the reviewers, one of the like reporters, it felt like Breath of the Wild style gameplay uh, when mm-hmm. they were going out and about and like exploring. It's funny you should say that. It's exactly what I said on Twitter. It felt like a reskinned uh, Breath of the Wild game with uh, Kojima's touches. Never on mind, it. that was you. Then I'm. Uh, it's been a long week, oh, Tyler. Whoops. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that was. I'm like, oh, okay. No, it's okay. Prof- I'm a professional <laughs> journalist now. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming from some high hotshot journalist who's seen the gameplay. So you've seen the full thing, then, I mean, t- you're Tyler? Not wrong. Yeah. What's that? Have you seen the full thing then? Like the full? Uh, I watched. I watched like ninety five percent of it. I don't think I watched the very end. Right. The thing I was most impressed with uh, was uh, he was following which i'm guessing you would call it a death strand or something like that this horrific looking nano machine strand that's flying through the air that had like uh nano machine like corpses floating in the air and eventually mm. it looked like uh using the baby you got infected by it or you somehow got injected into this little alter reality to where you you fight a uh shadow of the colossus style creature right mm, right so in this case it looked like a bull or something like that and it was this you know this black bull that would charge around and whatnot and you fight it by hitting well i saw fucking grenades i don't know what else you use right. but he was chucking fucking grenades at it and fighting this uh death stranding creature i think it was called like a a beach creature or something like that and it he beat it and got a bunch of shit I have no idea what it was or why it was there or what the point of it was, but it was interesting. So is it like, um, is it like one of those things where when you use the baby to see and fight these creatures, does it just like, do you just shift into like an alternate plane? Like you're still in the same location. You're just seeing something else. In the trailer, when I was watching it, it looked like he was walking through what looked like a uh, trailer trash heap or something like that. Like, or sorry, junkyard. And all of a sudden, after he got, he like he so, yeah, started acting like he was being infected by something, then it felt like it suddenly shifted to where you were in a shallow pool of water fighting this creature. Okay. And so, like, that it almost looked like it teleported you. I have no idea if it teleported you into, like, an alternate reality or if it teleported you nearby, because it did a cutscene to where you look like you're a snake going through water and whatnot, and suddenly it just kind of, like, panned out and you're in water with this creature. I have no idea what the fuck it means. Okay. Um. Kojima. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, does, yeah. does, what's, is, is, is this whole game, like, a euphemism for giving birth? I don't know. That's a good question. There's a time where I saw him walk up to some kind of technological mushroom machine and it started playing, I think, Apple Music or some shit like that. It was like, okay. Yeah, it said you throw blood bombs, too. Cool. Oh, that sounds like a Kojima thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fact that and a certain time And if you don't have blood in it already, you just it takes blood from you to throw it. I don't know. The thing that I thought immediately when you said there's monsters, like an alter, uh, like an alternate realm, the baby maybe helps them see, like a bridge, the bridge baby. So maybe the the baby is helping to bridge that gap to this alternate realm because of like the purity of a young human spirit or something like that. Like that's some crazy interesting stuff. I'm interested to see what else comes out about this because I mean, graphically it looks awesome, right? And if the physics I mean, I- are as important, like there's consequences for actions and it seems really cool yeah and i i like that train of thought glenn but the issue is all the babies and all of the trailers and gameplays they seem oddly grown up I, and like i they have more like, personality than a baby should they're, they're cognizant yeah it's versus like being what a baby is yeah it's like, like they're they're maybe like a, 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 because they still look like babies. fetuses but then you can like just with the way like their eyes are open and focusing and understanding what's going on it's like what if i what if what if they're born from the strand? What if these babies are just doomed to never grow old and they're just there to lead us and shepherd us to these fights? And I don't know what's going on with this game. Somebody help me. Huh. There is a, a, a particular scene I got a kick out of with the whole physics and stuff you guys were talking about where he was trying to cross the river, but he done goofed much like Oregon Trail when he tried to ford the river. But uh, <laughs> you're, you're, some supplies. 
Yeah, your, your <laughs> caravine kind of dips into the water a little too far. And he's like, well, I was trying to carry 2,000 pounds with the material in my back. And uh, I tried to atlas this shit across a deep river. Oh, it didn't work. And he started losing shit in the river. And he's trying to push buttons to wait himself to a safe spot. And it was comical and realistic. A little bit more realistic than what I would have wanted, to be honest. But hmm. <laughs> what, what I wanted with uh, these kind of games never mattered. You know, it's like... I wanted an understandable story and Mel Gear Solid. <laughs> <laughs> Kojima Sama would like a word with you. Because <laughs> that's never going to happen. And he, this is his you own story. You can reach out to uh, Tyler on no, Twitter for a public apology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at two times Tyler on Twitter. Uh, is this a game that you guys actually want to get, or is it just something that uh, you guys kind of been admiring from afar? Like, are you actually going to buy this game? I kind of want to see more before I more to I'm s- it. I'm scared. I'm kind of on Glenn's side here, but I also just want to say f- fuck it and buy it. As, like yeah. as a purchase of faith because regardless if I'm gonna get this I don't think I'm gonna be disappointed by this game Tyler I might question my sanity and my existence throughout but at the end of it I, I don't think like I'll question my change yourself to like li- like it's one of those things where it's like the effect that uh let's say Skyward Sword the Legend of Zelda for the Wii uh it was an okay game it wasn't a great game it came out around the same time as uh Elder School Elder Scrolls Skyrim like within like oh, two so. weeks of each other so i played skyward sword i thought it was the best fucking thing of all time it's like i don't want to play touch fucking skyward i got skyward sword man you know this is such a well yeah of course i'm gonna change my entire mentality even if the game is not that good to you know justify my purchase of it so you're gonna buy this game it's like wow this game is garbage but it's garbage because it's fucking art and I paid $60 for it. And, you know, people do it all the time. You know, I paid the money, so I got to justify the purchase I, if I make shit up. I, I agree with that. I, I think people, uh, I've done that definitely with, um, I, I can't think of a game particularly right now, but I think this is one of those games where you have to, I, I think you just have to experience it. And I think you just have to make that purchase of faith that's why you should give it for free <laughs> so <laughs> if, if then at the end of the game you have the option to buy it so if anybody's listening we would that's love a Kojima, review copy it? for cm uh, for casual master quest um, for sea of thieves <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> you have any extra copies of sea of thieves um but yeah no i might consider it uh november is gonna be a tricky time to consider it because sword and shield so, so you best believe I'm, I'm still gonna kick out of uh the idea that this game like the first half of it you get to play completely free but like at the midway point it's like if you want to play you gotta actually buy the game now like it gives you the first half half of the game as a demo just for shits and gales this game does no i'm just saying it, like, like the idea that's of something it. kojima would do yeah that would be interesting and then if you want the end you gotta pay like a, a five cent dlc or something like that <laughs> That would force developers not to live on nostalgia or hype, and because if the game sucks, nobody's actually going to Wait, buy no it. nostalgia and no hype? That's just destroyed their yeah. entire business model. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, you can Can't still yeah, use nostalgia possible. and hype, but then people New play IPs? it. New IPs? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. New I'm IPs? No gross. reskins? What? That's possible? <laughs> what is... No remasters? It's all 151. No remastered Speaking consoles? Of which, I believe it was uh, NBA 2020 or something. Or, yeah, 2020 is coming out. Or, it, yeah, I think it's that. And uh, on the PlayStation 4, they forgot the chain. You know how on the PlayStation 4 you scroll through the icons and stuff? It'll show you, like, a little logo thing? The NBA two, you know, 2020 forgot to change their logo from NBA 2019 because of how much they copy and pasted over. It's like, oof, oof. F. Whoops. Man. Uh, Basically, it's like, just a patch of this. It's just yeah. updated patches every year. I mean, it still kicks yeah, like just renamed it. it still gives me a kick every time when I think about how uh, with Atlas, which was the same people who made um, Arc, when you go to the main screen, Persona. if you had a controller, um, you could scroll <laughs> down and then you'd access an Arc menu. Oh my god! It still gives me a fucking kick. Like I can understand reusing assets. You have to as a develop, like as a programmer, you have to reuse assets because it just makes right. more sense. Why would you want to reinvent Why the would you deal build when it's it already? Again? Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. But like to that point, like to that extent of being lazy, yeah, I can't. So. Well, it's like when the guys that made Ingress helped develop Pokemon Go. They used the same framework. Yeah. Because it's a similar style. No, it game, makes sense. Yeah. There was no reason not to, you know? Yeah. And they just added like newer mecha- newish laziness. mechanics on top of it. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. It's a clear difference. Um, yep. 
So that's the topic of the show, Hideo Kojima, Death Stranding. We have a little bit more information about it. It's coming out November 22nd, I believe. Um, I could be wrong. And it's starring Norman Reedus as the main character and Mads Mikkelsen as the reported uh, main bad guy. And I love Mads Mikkelsen. So, you know, that might just be enough to convince me to give it a go. What, is, what else is Mads Mikkelsen in? Um, he was in the Hannibal TV show. Um, he was one of the Bond villains, I'm pretty sure. Um, oh, cool. If he's a Bond villain, he's a good villain. Yeah, like Hannibal is the only thing that stands out for me right now because that show was something else. Um, but yeah. Uh, so moving on to game releases, we've got only a few games coming out over the uh, next week. Huh. So he was in uh, Doctor Strange. Oh, cool. oh yeah, he was the main bad guy in Doctor it. Strange. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I like. So he's four thousand years old. Yeah, he was the main bad guy. Yeah, yeah. He, I love. He he's got such a in, dynamic uh, range. I love him so much. And Rogue One as well no idea what, what though but oh uh, that dude Galen, i love that Galen dude Urso? he's awesome yeah 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 he's galen urso oh, yeah. yeah isn't he like the guy in the very beginning that uh he's the one that made the, the hole on the like death that? star yeah he made the flaw that allowed them to destroy it because he was forced to work on it but he made it so that there was basically a kill switch on it but it was really hard to access it and you could only access it if you knew <laughs> yeah Matt mickelson fantastic right. actor uh awesome yeah he's so good so back to game releases We've got four yeah. games coming out. Um, first one on the list is AI The Somnium Files. Coming out September 17th, okay. PS4, Nintendo Switch, PC. It is a detective based game where you play a PI or something. Um, cool. I like the name. Somnium sounds neat. Then we've got uh, Nino Kuni, <laughs> Wrath of the White Witch Remastered, coming out September 20th, PS4, <laughs> Nintendo Switch, and PC. <laughs> Uh, Untitled Goose Game coming out. That's also my on favorite. What? <laughs> Neo Kuni? Uh, no. Untitled Goose Untitled Game? Untitled Goose yeah, Game. I'm, what a like, fantastic I'm, game. I might, because they're picking it up. Untitled Goose Game, September 20th, PC and Nintendo Switch. <laughs> and it's a game where you play as a goose, and it's a stealth game, so you have to do, like, it's whatever. Good, yeah, without now. detection. Wait, you are the goose? You are the goose. You are the it's goose. It's a game about being a goose. Yeah, so um, yes. you play it in isometric view, and it's a game about being a I goose and causing chaos and doing things undetected, like stealing keys and stuff to gain access to places, at least from the oh, trailers I've seen. Oh my god. And then I, would, I think I would appreciate a raccoon game like that, too. A raccoon game? Anyway, a raccoon game would be cool, yeah. I think, as well. Yeah, where you have to steal trash <laughs> yeah. without the humans finding you. Right. Um, and then finally, the big game for the week is <laughs> The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, the remastered version for the Switch, <laughs> September 20th. And that is going to be a good game, um, I think. Best for Anyways, last. I really like the a good remake. I really like the art style, <laughs> um, so I'm excited oh, yeah. to give I've that a go. Some yeah, it looks, looks awesome. it's really it looks really cute. I love it. Like mm -hmm. I think it's a good fun way to like um, reintroduce uh, a new generation into uh, the series, into the franchise. Um, so yeah, um, that's all the game releases. The big game releases coming out this week. And then moving on to this day in gaming for September 16th. Um, four games on this list. Um, and a few older ones. Uh, He's pulled an NBA 2K. <laughs> Osu came out this day in 2007 Holy for shit. PC. This game is now officially Oof. 12 years old. Um, it is a game that I've seen people play to absurd levels of precision. And I respect those people. Uh, Pokemon Emerald. Got its Japanese oh release in 2004 nice. on this day. 15 years ago. It's It's been a while. That, I mean, I'm only saying this. Oh, no, fuck it. I'm going to say it. this makes me feel old. Like, it, I'm yeah. feeling my age just knowing that. Uh, I can only imagine what it, what it's like for you, Tyler. Um, I was going to say, how long? How long <laughs> I'm the oldest one here. Two? Nine. I'm the oldest one here. Yeah, no, I, you, you've not been long enough, for, long, you've not been around long enough for me to be mean to you, so it's. Tyler's getting the full brunt of it. <laughs> for now. It'll get, we'll get there. <laughs> one cross uh, country visit. <laughs> um, Animal Crossing for the GameCube in 2002. I bought that. Uh, I had that game. I'm pretty sure this is the original Animal Crossing too, like the first one. And mm -hmm. I've never played Animal Crossing, but you know, happy 17 years quick math for all the Animal Crossing fans. This is when the series started for you guys. Um, and then hey, Nick. Yeah. Pokemon Emerald came out for the Game Boy Advance in Japan in 2004. Yeah. Are we going to fight? No. Because we, we made a huge argument about uh, the country. I said, I mean, with I... With the Dreamcast. No, I said it got its Japanese release. You said that, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Ooh, and, and, and also, and also before, also before, um, I believe it was X and Y, the Pokemon games were a staggered release. So the, the Japanese release came out six months to se- se- eight months in advance of the uh, rest of the world. So, you know. I think it's only fitting. What about the uh, the popular DOS version uh, for the PC in 1998 called uh, Fuck Quest? You really, you're gonna sk- skip that diamond? I w- did I miss that entirely? <laughs> in 1998. 1998. <laughs> There's a game called The Fuck Quest. I skipped that wow. entirely. What the fuck is this? Uh, it's, what is this? What is this? There's nothing about it. It looks like it's in Microsoft Paint. Oh no. Narrative adult, really. <laughs> uh, credit score. There, <laughs> there's no information it, it, it about this game. One- what? Yeah, there's a game called Fuck Quest, apparently in 1998. It looks like uh, it was made in paint. Did you say starring that? Starring Richard, yeah. aka Dick. Okay, cool. Uh, th- I'm sorry, I didn't mean to derail the whole thing with uh, Fuck Quest. Fuck Quest is a parody of the Sierra style games like Leisure Suit Larry, King's Quest, etc. This game has similar interface sounds and graphics as a small game that'll make people who have played the Sierra games laugh, although nobody although anybody else will understand the point. Probably R rated because of not so subtle sexual content. Can be finished quickly. That's what she said. Title of my sex tape. Moving on to the last one on the list. <laughs> Super Mario Bros. 2 1992. Oh gee. Yeah. So some some heavy hitters. Uh, we've had Two big Pokemon releases back to back. Um, yeah, no kidding. I, yeah, I remember watching my dad play this game on the Super Nintendo. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I didn't play it myself because he didn't trust me playing. The Super that's Nintendo. fair. I yeah. couldn't touch it. I used to be terrified of uh, Super Mario Brothers too. Why? Why? Uh, there's a lot of enemies that kind of made me scared. Uh, like for example, I don't remember what the the actual name for them are. Uh, the mask looking creatures. Oh, They're like there's like uh basically you'd be able to open the doors to take uh to like the shadow version of that area uh-huh. and there'd be like a key or something you can grab, but when you activate it, uh it would summon a uh, a mask type a type enemy that would haunt you. Ah. Uh much like uh Super Mario Brothers three, I was terrified of the level where you had a sun chasing after you. Uh the enemy is called a Phanto. Hmm. Yeah, it, it was a very scary creature. Anyways, yep, yep. I'm, I'm familiar with the sun Twitter chasing. Two time. Okay. Motherfucker, did you just do what I think you did? Yeah, I said it. I'm very familiar with the sun chasing creature <laughs> enemy. Yeah. I, res- I, 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 I respect that. Hello, where can That's we find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, twitch.tv forward slash LRE11 and on Twitter at LRD11th and on Instagram at LRE11. Nick, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at two times Tyler where I talk shit and I like my friends. Uh, Glenn, where can people find you? You just do I yourself. So you just do, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm so very confused. Um, you can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash raiseth, R-A-E-Z-E-T-H, and I'm an associate with Ready to Roll, Ready, the number two, R-O-L-E, as well on Twitter at Glenn Houston. Looks like Huston, H-U-S-T-O-N. And Glenn with two ends. So, yeah, Ooh, that's me. me. Oh, yeah. Huh. It sucks because anytime I do voice to text, some reason when I say the the name Glenn, it's like Glenn with one N. And it's like, who the fuck designed you to think that there's a Glenn without, you know, that second N? Like, well, what is wrong with you? That even a my, name without, without the second N? Uh-huh. Yeah, my, I'm, I'm named after both sides of my family. My, uh... My, on my mom's side, Glenn with two N's is a last name, and on my dad's side, Glenn with one N is a middle name. So when I got the name Glenn with two N's, I got the last name from my mom's side and my dad's middle name without the extra <laughs> N, or with the extra Interesting. N. So. I, I, I'm just so used to John Glenn, and oh, know, yeah. I went to a high school that it was John Glenn High School, so you know, just I'm so used to Glenn as in G-L-E-N-N. Yeah, it just it, it breaks me seeing it without one end. I'm Fun sorry fact. to all the listeners that are GLEN. <laughs> Fun fact: In 1941, the Heisman winner was a running back from Army named Glenn Davis, spelled exactly the same as me. Nice, yeah. nice. Anyway, you must be <laughs> proud. Only famous person. He's not even famous. Right. <laughs> Nick, you got Twitter. Glenn, you got email. I'll take Facebook and Instagram. All right. You can find us, Casual Master Quest, on Twitter at MasterQuestPod, or... You can find us on email at CasualMasterQuest at gmail.com, or... At Facebook.com slash CasualMasterQuest. No spaces. Or... Instagram. 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 Also. Was I supposed to be Instagram, too? (laughs) Nick always does Instagram. I usually do the Instagram. We're also Casual Master Quest on Instagram. Um, but yeah, um, you can also find the show on Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Stitcher, whatever you like to use, Luminary, 
Uh, and we have uh, a Twitter giveaway going on, so go check us out there. Do we? Because we don't. Oh, yeah, we do. Twitter. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do have a Twitter I'll, giveaway yeah, going so on. We need yeah, to fight each other figure out what to do for Discord. We will We will work on that. We still have time. Let's give away a million dollars. Easy. Easy million dollar giveaway. <laughs> easy. All, got it. All, Let me get it out of my wallet. Just, like, just get on uh, Discord and uh, check out the million dollar giveaway. <laughs> yes. So Nick, that was Nick Tyler. Right? <laughs> that was that was. I'm not. No, I only. I'm only familiar with some Arabian princes. I don't know I ain't them personally. Coins, I'm fucking Wario. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll fight you for it. So that was Tyler. That was Glenn. I'm Nick. This was episode 66 of Casual Master Quest. Anything I before we? I am fucking Wario. Or sorry, I'm fucking <laughs> am Wario. Not I am fucking Wario. Hey man, I'm whatever floats your boat. We're not. Man. We're not here to judge. As long as everybody's <laughs> it's consensual and everybody's happy, nobody cares. It's 2019. Um, you know, we're we're allies on the show. You know. We're, yeah. And if you want to check me out, you can join me and play the World of Wario Craft. Hell yeah, that was a so smooth, smooth input like great fucking good yeah. pun building dude love it good improv yeah yes and that was us <laughs> that was Tyler <laughs> Glenn me this is casual, this is casual master quest thank you very much for listening and don't forget to never stop the grind yeah <laughs> the intro to the podcast titled casual master quest was paid for and produced by the wonderful talent revelries music you can find more of their work at soundcloud.com forward slash revelries music or just click on the link in the show descriptions the background music is the album top 50 best classical piano music by brilliant classics you can find out more about creative commons at www.creativecommons.org forward slash license forward slash buy forward slash 4.0